Praise the Lord. Today is your day. This is your time. Wonders today. In your life. Wonders of salvation. Am I talking to somebody there? Wonders of healing. Wonders of miracle. Wonders of deliverance. Is coming your way tonight. Wherever you are. In front of me. By the sides. Outside. Anywhere. You are hearing the voice. Wonders will happen in your life. Today is my day. I said today is my day. You'll get it in Jesus name. Raise up those hands and let's anoint those hands. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all those who are here today. Men, women, brothers, sisters, church people, invitees, everyone. Lord we pray this crusade will shake everything shakeable out of every life in Jesus name. Every negative power you shake out. Every oppression you shake out. Every deformity you shake out. Sicknesses you shake out. All the causes you shake out. Yokes you shake out. And Lord I pray salvation for your people today. Healing for your people today. Deliverance for your people today. Wonders upon wonders. Wonders upon wonders. Signs and miracles upon everyone here today. Anoint those hands. And when they lay those hands on themselves, let a breakthrough happen. Confirm it even today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as you know, we come together because this is our day. The day of the God of wonders. And that God of wonder will do wonders in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. It's a question, and the answer is right there. It says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Somebody help me shout, doing wonders. Tonight, the Lord himself is introducing himself unto us. He's saying there is no God like him. And there's no power like his power. No authority like his authority. And there is no miracle like the miracle he does. And he's still working wonders today. And he's still doing miracles today. And he's going to do it in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Actually, that chapter 15 of Exodus is the song of the children of Israel. The children of Israel had been suffering for a long time. And now Moses came to them. And it was a day when he came to them. Because the Lord had appeared unto him. And he brought that message. The message of wonders he brought to the children of Israel. Like your own miracle is coming to you today. The message of wonders coming to you today. And of his power coming to you today. There have been oppression for a long time. There have been suffering for a long time. And now the message came to them. Well, it's a long story. But as the story was concluding, they saw that the God they served and the God they came to was the God and is the God of wonders. And the God you come to today, and the God who is blessing you today is the God of power. It's a God of wonders. And it's a God that is going to break every yoke out of your life. He will do it tonight in Jesus' name. When they said, who is like unto thee? They were wondering. 
and they were amazed at what the Lord had done. They would look at all the miracles they performed, and he, and he delivered them, and he set them free. Well, number one, they saw the wonder of his word, because the word had come to them, and the word that came to them as they received the word, as they accepted the word, embraced the word, believed the word, wonders happened in their life. You are still going to find out today that God has not changed. His word gives us wonders. Number one, the wonder of his word. They saw something else. Number two, the wonder of his willingness. Pharaoh was tall. Pharaoh was difficult. It was like they will never come out of captivity. But the willingness of God that says, I will deliver them. And he says tonight, I will deliver you. He says, he will deliver you. And you are going to find tonight, number two, the wonder of his willingness. And then when they came out of the, out of the land of Egypt, they were now in the wilderness. How are they going to be fed? What kind of program will give them water, millions of them, and satisfy everyone? All of a sudden, they saw it coming from heaven. All of a sudden tonight, your blessing is coming from heaven. Like rain, like dew, it will pour upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. And then they were surprised. And they had manna, everyone, this one ate, that one ate, everyone ate to satisfaction. Now they add, number three, the wonder of his welfare. He's caring for you. And your welfare is his concern. Every provision he will make in your life, and he will do it tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Not too long, as they came out of the land of Egypt, they were now going, and they were happy, and they said, what a wonderful God, what a great God, he has delivered us. And the Red Sea was before them, and here came Pharaoh, and all his chariots, they were running after them. They became afraid. There is nothing for you to fear tonight. He will settle everything in your life. I wanted the river state. Amen. And then, as they cried, the Lord told Moses, He said, Why are you crying? It's not the time to cry now. Stretch your rod, and then the sea will part before you. There's a breakthrough for you tonight. And then they came to the other side of the river. And the Egyptians said, we'll do that to you. We'll follow after them. We'll run after them. We will destroy them. It's a lie. They cannot destroy you. They will not destroy you. And then the children of Israel wondered the wonder of his warfare. The wonder of his warfare. It was in the battlefield. And then in that warfare, God overcame for them. The Lord has overcome for you tonight. And then as they looked, they said, but look at that. All those Egyptians, they had their chariots. We have no chariots. They had their horses. We don't have any horse. And they have their weapons. We don't have any weapon. What did God use? Just a simple rod. Pointed like that, did not even touch the sea, did not touch the ocean, did not touch the river. And yet, just pointing like that, everything was divided. The wonder of his weapon. The weapon is using tonight. You are going to hear the declaration of the word. And as I speak against your problem, and I stretch out the rod of his word in your life, all those problems are solved tonight in Jesus' name. Evil spirit will vanish away. All those parts of darkness will crumble. And they will be destroyed even before you tonight in Jesus' name. And then, uh, you know, there had been slaves in Egypt for many, many years. Actually, hundreds of years. And as they were coming out, you will think they will come with poverty, penury, nothing in their hands. But they came out with plenty. You are coming out of this place with plenty. 
They came out with prosperity. Prosperity will follow you after we finish tonight. The wonder of his wealth. The wonder of his wealth. Everything they needed, everything was provided for them. Everything you need tonight, everything is provided in Jesus' name. The wonder of his word. The wonder of his willingness. The wonder of his welfare. The wonder of his warfare. The wonder, the wonder of his weapon. The wonder of his wells are now for you. I said now for you. Are you there? I said are you there? You know what the Lord said? He said I'm bringing you to myself. He said Moses go tell them. I bring them out of Egypt and I bring them unto myself. And when you come to the Lord tonight, all your needs, all through your days, throughout your life, everything is going to be met in Jesus' name. The wonder of his welcome. The wonder of his welcome. He rejects none. He says, whosoever, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise reject. He welcomes you tonight. I said he welcomes you tonight. Where are you? Welcome. Tell the person by your side, welcome. Tell the person by the other side, welcome. I welcome you to miracle tonight. I welcome you to surplus tonight. I welcome you to your healing tonight. I welcome you to your deliverance tonight. Once again, help me shout, welcome. The wonder of his welcome tonight. As I look at Exodus chapter 15, I'm talking to you on the supernatural wonders of our mighty God. The supernatural wonders of our mighty God. Look at that, verse 11 again. In Exodus chapter 15, it says, Who is like unto thee? Who can save like you? Who can heal like you? Who can deliver like you? Who can provide like you? Who can protect like you? Who can divide the Red Sea like you? Who can walk wonders like you? Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, like thee in power, like thee in authority, like thee in anointing, like thee in creation? Like thee in redemption, who is like unto thee, like unto thee as a helper, like unto thee as a sustainer, like unto thee as the one that helps, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Doing, tell me, doing, shout it out, doing wonders. The supernatural wonders of our mighty God. Three things I'm looking at in this chapter. Number one, the wonder of liberation and freedom from suffering. Freedom from suffering. Thank God tonight you are free. I said before you go away from here tonight, you are free in Jesus' name. The wonder of liberation and freedom from suffering. Number two, the wonder of salvation and freedom from sin. The wonder of salvation and freedom from sin. You have salvation tonight. I said you have salvation tonight. It's coming. It's coming. Accept it. Believe it. It is yours in Jesus' name. The wonder of salvation and freedom from sin. Number three, the wonder of healing and freedom from sickness. Somebody there is getting healed right now. Tonight, blind eyes will open. Tonight, the lame will rise up and walk. Tonight, mighty, mighty healings and miracles in your life in Jesus' name. The wonder of healing and freedom from sickness. Number one, do you remember number one? I said, do you remember number one? It's the wonder of liberation and freedom from suffering. I'm coming to Exodus chapter 15, and I'm reading from verse 3. It says, the Lord is a man of war. 
The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and the hosts as he cast into the sea. His chosen captives also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. And it says, thou sendest forth thy wrath. And which which consumed them as trouble. I need to tell you why they were saying what they were saying. They had been under oppression. They had been under slavery. And they had been in the prison, in the captivity of Pharaoh. And they suffered. They beat them. They suffered. They punished them. They suffered. In the day, they ruled them with rigor. In the night, there was no rest, and they were crying to the Lord. And as they cried to the Lord, he had their cry. He had their wailing. He saw their tears, and he said, Moses, go to my people in Egypt, because I'm bringing them out. Enough is enough. Tonight, the Lord is saying about you, enough is enough. Enough of crying. Enough of weeping, enough of suffering, enough of all the captivity, enough of all the oppression, enough of hunger, enough of slavery, enough is enough. Tonight, deliverance has come. Tonight, liberation has come. And so Moses came to them. He said, the Lord has appeared unto me. And I can tell you tonight, the Lord is here. Are you there? I said, the Lord is here. His power is here tonight. His anointing that breaks every yoke is here tonight. And so Moses came to them and said, wipe away your tears. Stop your crying. Stop your weeping. This suffering is going to end now. And the same thing I come to tell you today. There's freedom from suffering tonight. Whatever you're suffering from, there's a Pharaoh there tormenting your life. There are magicians there tormenting your life. There are astrologers there tormenting your life. There are paths of darkness there tormenting your life. It's coming to an end today. And so Moses went to Pharaoh. And he said, let my people go. Let them go out of this suffering. Let them go out of this slavery. And Pharaoh said, what do you mean? I'm not ready to release them. I'm telling you, whether they are ready or they are not ready to release you, you are coming out today. Whether they do it voluntarily or they do it by force, you are coming out today. That suffering will stop. The pain will come to an end. And the oppression in your life will come to an end in Jesus' name. And so God told Moses and said, show him that I sent you. He threw the rod down, became a serpent. And Pharaoh said, that's not enough. I'm not going to allow you to go because of that. He called his magicians and they did a fake uh, something and duplicated that. And said, you see that? I'm not going to allow the people to go. Don't worry about that. Whatever they do, whatever they say, tonight you are coming out. And then he stretched his rod against the river. And then Ribanal became blood. Oh, Pharaoh said, that's nothing, that's nothing. I'm not going to allow anything to shake me. These are my slaves. I'm going to oppress them. And I'm going to destroy them. Nobody will take them out of my hand. Maybe your enemy is bragging. And he's saying, they are mine. They are mine. I'm going to torture them. I'm going to torment them. I'm going to kill them. It's a lie. You will not die in Satan's den. You will not die in the enemy's camp. You will not die under the enemy's power. Tonight you are coming out in Jesus' name. And so the Lord began to use other weapons. He used, the, he used the rain. He used the storm. He used the flies. He used the lights. He used everything until Pharaoh said, come, come, come. The people now can go. And Moses said, who are the people that will go? He said, well, let your men go. Leave your women behind. No, not at all. The women tonight, they are delivered. 
I said, the women tonight, they are set free. And okay, let the children wait. No children here today. Miracle of wonders upon your life in Jesus' name. All right, now you can go, but you leave your sheep behind. You leave, your, you leave all the animals and you leave all your property behind. No, your property will not remain in Egypt. Your property will not remain in a foreign land. And so the Lord now said, this is final. Somebody let help me shout final. Somebody help me shout final. He said, go take a lamb and kill that lamb. And put the blood in the basin. Apply the blood on the lintels of the houses of the children of Israel. An angel of death is going to pass through the land today. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It's the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the next day, John sees Jesus coming. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That's the lamb that was slain for you. He died for you. I said he died for you. And by his stripes tonight, you are healed. By his wound tonight, you are saved. All your problems, all your suffering, everything over tonight, because of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you, you are free. Free from suffering, you are free. Free from sorrow, you are free. Free from shame, you are free. And so the children of Israel did what the Lord had said. And they applied the blood. And in the night, the angel of death passed over. And then all those Egyptians, because they didn't have the mark of the blood of the Lamb. The firstborn there died, everyone. When they woke up in the morning, all the children of Israel totally protected from that suffering. And all the people here that I see tonight, protected. All the people here that I see tonight, preserved. The angel of death will not touch your life. The suffering will not continue. But you must apply the blood of Jesus Christ who died for you. Didn't you hear what he said on the cross of Calvary? It said, it is finished. I said tonight, it is finished. Your suffering, your sorrow, your tears, your hunger, the oppression, the yoke of the devil, the curse of the enemy, the powers of darkness, it is finished. And so, Pharaoh now said, you can go. Thank God you are released today. I said, thank God you are released today. That's the liberation we're talking about. All the suffering caused by your enemies. All the suffering caused by your own sin. All the suffering caused by paths of darkness. Tonight, liberation for you. Tonight, freedom for you. You're free in Jesus' name. Number one, the wonder of liberation. The wonder of freedom. Freedom from suffering and freedom from pain and freedom from all the needs of your life. Thank God you are free tonight. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You accept him as your personal savior. You receive him and say, yes, he died for me. He's the lamb of God that took all my sin, all my shame, all my sorrow, all my suffering away. It will be confirmed in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number two now is the wonder of salvation and freedom from sin. The wonder of salvation and freedom from sin. See the children of Israel. It's not only the freedom from suffering they had. They also had salvation. Salvation. Somebody shout salvation. salvation. If you are going to have it tonight, I say shout salvation. salvation. You know salvation is for you tonight. Shout salvation. Hey, look at this, look at this. I'm reading to you from Exodus chapter 15 verse 2. It says, the Lord is my strength 
and my song, and he is become my salvation. You see that? The children of Israel, they understood. It's not just that we came out of suffering, that's good, that's good, but you know, there's something you still need beyond that liberation. There's something you need before, beyond coming out of the land of Egypt. You need the salvation of the Lord. And so they were redeemed. And so they were purchased. And so they were forgiven. And so all their sins were taken away. And so salvation came to them like the salvation is coming to you tonight. I said salvation is coming to you tonight. Look at this. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. You know, they made it personal. It's not just that the Lord is strong. Yes, we know that. We know that. But when it becomes personal, that to say, me, here today, I'm going to have the strength of the Lord. Why did they say the Lord is my strength? Because before this time, they didn't have any strength. They were weak. They were powerless. And they could not deal without doing something wrong. They wanted to do right, they couldn't do right. They wanted to speak right, they couldn't speak right. They wanted to walk in the upright way, they could not. They didn't have the strength until God came to them, just like you, just like you. Many times to say, I will not do that again. I will not say that again. I will not go there again. But you didn't have any strength, no power. To fulfill all the promises we're making. But tonight, the Lord is your strength. Somebody there said tonight, the Lord is your strength. He says, the Lord is my strength. And song, he has become my salvation. He has become my salvation. What salvation? I want you to picture the children of Israel. It's like they were inside the dungeon. They were inside the prison. They were inside the well, the well of sin, the prison of sin, the captivity of sin. They wanted to come out by themselves. The sides of the walls in the well were so slippery, they could not come out until the Lord Almighty himself he stretched down his long hand and brought them out of that well of sin. That prison of sinning, that captivity of sinning, he brought them out and he came to the righteousness of God. And now they said, the Lord God is my salvation. It's your salvation tonight. I said, it's your salvation tonight. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He wants to save you from sin. In fact, that's the meaning of the name Jesus. The angel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And if you're one of his people tonight, you don't belong to the devil. Am I talking right? You don't belong to the enemy. Am I saying the truth? You want to be one of his people tonight, then he will save you out of your sin. He'll save you out of your evil. Every kind of sin that you have been trying to overcome. And you couldn't overcome. Lying, I will not lie again, but the lying was there. And cheating, I will not cheat again, but the cheating was there. And all the evil, I not do evil anymore, all the evil was there. The fighting and the violence, everything was there. And you couldn't be free, but tonight the Lord will pick you up. He will lift you up. He'll take you up. And he'll take you away from that dungeon and that captivity of sinning. Tonight, he will do it in Jesus' name. They were without strength. They were without power. They didn't have any power to lift up themselves. They didn't have any power to free themselves. But the power came from heaven and came to set them free. Like the power has come tonight. The power coming from Calvary. The power coming from Christ. And the power that comes from the atonement of Jesus Christ. Tonight, you'll taste that power. You will sense that power. He will set you free tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone must make it personal for himself. Because it's not just, it's like our Savior or their Savior. Tonight is when you make it personal and you say, the Lord is my strength. I wasn't strong before, but now I have. I come to the Lord and let the weak say, 
I am strong. Tonight, he'll make you strong. I said, tonight, he'll make you strong. And then he said, he has become. You see, that's what become. It wasn't like that before. I wasn't saved before. But now, he, the Lord, has become my salvation. Tonight, as you receive him. And tonight, as you turn away from your sin, you turn away from everything that is evil. All the bad, bad things you have been doing in private, in the public, at home, in church, outside church, anywhere. Tonight, the Lord will save you in Jesus' name. You will repent of your sin. You repent of your sin. Why do you repent of sin? Because you know, sin is like poison. It is deadly poison. And every, th every time you drink that deadly poison, you're killing yourself. And so if you want the Lord to save you, well, and he's going to do it tonight. I said he's going to do it tonight. You will put down that bottle of poison. You will put down all those activities of sinning. You say, no, I can't do that anymore. Because, you know, if you are telling, let's say, for example, you go to the doctor, you are taking poison. And you go to the doctor and say, doctor, doctor, please help me. I'm suffering. I'm dying. There's something eating me up on the inside. And the doctor said, what did you take? Well, doctor, I'll confess to you, I took poison. You have to confess. Because if you don't confess to him, he will not be able to make the proper prescription for you. He will not be able to tell you this is what to take. So you confess and you say, doctor, I took poison. He says, all right, you will take this one now so that it will neutralize all the poison you have drunk. And if you take that prescription, and then you go for your bottle of poison again, and then you drink poison after you have got the prescription, will the prescription work? I want to hear my people. No. The same thing. Sin is a poison. Lying is a poison. Cheating is a poison. Fornication, adultery, that is poison. And drunkenness, that is poison. Fighting violence, that is poison. It's a poison that kills. I will send somebody to hell fire. But as you come to the Lord, you confess. You say, Lord, I am sorry. And when you say, I'm sorry, I'll not touch that sin again. I'll not touch that poison again. I'll not go near that poison anymore. I come to you. And when you come to the Lord, he will forgive your sin. Give me a good amen. And when he forgives your sin, he sets you free. He says, go and sin no more. And then you have a testimony. You say, the Lord is my strength. You say, the Lord is my salvation. He'll be your salvation tonight. And then he says, I will prepare him an habitation. He's my father's God. I will exalt him. After we are saved, we don't go back again to the nightclubs. After we are saved, we don't go back again to the bad gang. After we are saved, we don't go back to that secret society anymore. After we are saved, we don't go back to the shrine anymore. After we are saved, we are now with the Lord. And he says, I will prepare him an habitation. That's why Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. If anyone open, hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. He will come in today. I said he will come in today. And then he will come to stay. And when he's staying inside your heart, you make him an habitation. He lives on the inside of you. And anywhere you go, if you're at a crossroad, he will speak from the inside of you. If you want to, if you're tempted and you want to do something wrong, he will talk from the inside of you. He will keep you righteous. He will keep you straight. He'll keep you upright. And he'll keep you doing the right thing in Jesus' name. And it says, I will exalt him. I will exalt him. That means I'll tell my friends now I'm saved. And I exalt him as my savior. I tell my neighbors now I'm saved. And those evil things, I do them no more. I will exalt him. That's what will happen in your life. I say that's what will happen in your life. Look at verse 11 here. I'm reading from verse 11 of that same chapter. It says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Those gods cannot save. Those idols cannot save. Those religions cannot save. 
Those ceremonies cannot save. But who is like unto thee? O God, the God who saves. The God who forgives. And the God who takes away your sin. And then he goes on to say, Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. And among them, the wonder of salvation. Thou stretch out thy right hand, and they are swallowed them. All those seas, everything will be swallowed. Everything will go out of sight. He will take your sin and he will put them in the depths of the sea. Never to be remembered anymore against your life in Jesus' name. It says, it must touch in thou in thy mercy. As let forth thy people which thou hast redeemed. That's another word for salvation. When you say you have redeemed them, you have saved them. You have taken them away from the slavery of sin. You have taken them away from the service of sin. You have taken them away from all the practice and the habit of sin. You have redeemed them. It says, Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. You see that when we, after we come to know the Lord, then we don't just stay in uh, places where they are not worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Now we come to his holy habitation. You come to a Bible-believing church. You say, now I'm born again. Now I'm saved. Things are different now. The places I used to go, I go there no more. Amen. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Amen. And the clothes I used to wear, I wear them no more. Amen. And the things I used to drink, I drink them no more. Amen. The amen is weak. I said amen. He says, now you are my strength. Now you are my strength. And he says, I will now be in thine holy habitation. And then he tells us in verse 16, fear and dread shall fall upon them. It says, fear and dread will fall upon your enemy. Fear and dread will fall upon your enemy. It says, by the greatness of thine armor, they shall be steel as steel as a stone until thy people pass over. O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. That's another word, purchased, because there's a price that is paid. A price that is paid for your salvation. And Jesus has paid that price. And he brought you up. And he bought you and purchased you out of the market of sinning. And now that's a new life. If any man be, Christ is a new creature. I see new creatures before me today. I said I see new creatures before me today. Because now all the old things, they will pass away. Old habits will pass away. Old lifestyle will pass away. Old fighting will pass away. Old drunkenness will pass away. And it says, behold, all things have become new. You are going to be a new man today. A new woman today. And a new person you are going to be today in Jesus' name. Because it says, he has purchased you. For the blood of Jesus, he has purchased you. The blood of the Lamb, he has purchased you. It tells us in verse 17, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance. In the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in. You see that? That's why the Bible says, the word of God says, come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord. And he says, I'll be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And he says, I will dwell in the midst of you. Now he's going to dwell in your heart. I said he's going to live in your heart. He says, O Lord, which thy hands have established, the Lord will establish you. Verse 18, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. In your heart, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. In your spirit, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. And as you go in your place of work, the Lord will reign. In your home, the Lord will reign. In your personal life, the Lord will reign. Because he has given you the wonder of his salvation and freedom from sin. 
today he sets you free. I said today he sets you free. Number one, the wonder of liberation and freedom from suffering. It will happen. I said it will happen. Number two, the wonder of salvation and freedom from sin. Number three now, the wonder of healing and freedom from sickness. There's freedom here. There's healing here. There's deliverance here. And tonight, that wonder of his healing will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Look at it, look at it now. I'm reading to you from chapter 15 of Exodus. I was looking at verse 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now is thy God because you are saved. Now is thy God because he has redeemed you. Now is thy God because he has ransomed you. Now is thy God because he has brought you near. And now you live with him and he lives with you. And he says, if thou now will hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And will do that which is right in his sight. What's right in his sight? He has given his only begotten son. His name is Jesus Christ. And you believe on him. And you accept him. And you say, yes, he is my savior. Yes, he is my Lord. I know he died for me. He didn't die for himself. I know he has taken all my sins away. And you believe him, which is right in the sight of the Lord. And will give ear to his commandments. And give and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. The disease of Egypt will not come upon you anymore. And if it's there tonight, it's going to be taken away. And then he says, and the latter part, therefore, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Anybody there, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Anybody there? I am the Lord that healeth thee. I said, is there anybody there? I am the Lord that healeth thee. Your healing is coming right now. I said, your healing is coming right now. Those blind eyes will open. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Those limb legs will have strength and they'll stand up because I am the Lord that healeth thee. The swelling in your tummy and swelling your body, that thing like a mountain will vanish away tonight. Because I am the Lord that healeth thee. You brought a child not hearing, a child not speaking. The word of power and the word of healing will come out tonight. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Arthritis there will not allow you to see it or stand. Pain in the chest and pain in the waist and pain in the knees and pain everywhere. You are healed tonight. I am the Lord that healeth thee. There's something walking about in your body. And then at night you'll be pressing you down. They will not allow you to have a good night's rest. But tonight you are free. Tonight I am free. All those things walking about, I command them. They come out in Jesus' name. Because I am the Lord that healeth thee. Maybe you have pains in your body. And it's almost everywhere. Touch the place where you have the pain. It's over here. It's over here. All the pain will vanish away tonight. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You know what he said? I am. He didn't say just I was. He did it in the past. He didn't say I will be. He'll do it in the future. But tonight and today. I said today and this very night. In that place where you are now is the ever forever existing I am that I am. He is the I am. I said he is the I am. I am the Lord that healeth thee, healeth thee, healeth thee. In the present tense today, healing is coming your way. I said healing is coming your way. The wonder of healing and freedom from sickness. Look at that verse 26 again. And he said, it's what he has said. And whatever he says will be fulfilled. Fulfillment is coming upon your life today. I said fulfillment is coming upon your life today. Are you there? Where are you? Shout fulfillment. Shout it aloud. It will happen to you in Jesus' name. And said, 
if thou shalt give ye the haki to the boys of the Lord thy God. What that means is you pay attention. And what the Lord is telling us from here, from the pulpit, and I say, raise up your hand, you listen. And then touch the other place where you're having the problem, you listen. And then I say, after we're finished prayer, and you hear the final amen, that sickness will no more be there. And then somebody there will shout, amen. And then I said, after that final amen, it is gone. You believe that, you accept that, you hold on to that, your healing has come. And the sicknesses of Egypt and the sicknesses of the world will not come upon your life. Because I am the Lord that he let me. He is the Lord and is going to heal you tonight. He is the Lord is going to heal you tonight. Number one, freedom from suffering. Number two, freedom uh, from sin. Number three, freedom from sickness. You are going to have everything tonight. We are going to go on one by one. Number one, salvation has come. I said salvation has come. What are you? Salvation has come. I said salvation has come. It's coming to you today. It's coming in your heart today. It's coming in your life today. You are going to be sick tonight. Wonder of all wonders. Wonder of all wonders, salvation has come to you tonight, and you are going to have it in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The wonder of his welcome. The wonder of his welcome. He wants to welcome you into his kingdom. He wants to welcome you into salvation. He wants to welcome you into total freedom tonight. And you are there. You say, yes, I'm coming. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. It's receiving you now as you come. And if you are coming to Christ to save you, to strengthen you, to cleanse your sin, to forgive your sin, to change your life, to give you strength where you are weak. If you are coming to the Lord tonight and you are saying, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Save my soul. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. That's right there. Wherever you are, raise that hand up now. As you are raising up your hand, you stand up. You say, yes, I stand up. I stand for salvation. I stand for forgiveness. I stand for the removal of all my sin. And the suffering for sinning, everything will go away. The eternal suffering, hellfire, will be canceled for your, on your behalf. You will not go to hellfire anymore. And you will come to the Lord. You live with him in heaven. His habitation. Now you are coming. Now you are coming. Raise up your hand wherever you are. In front of me and by the sides. In those halls, wherever you are. Anywhere you are now. Pay attention. Don't look here and there. And don't uh, talk with any other person now. Raise up your hand and stand up. And while you are standing up, say, Lord, I come. Say that, Lord, I come. Let the Lord hear you, Lord, I come. I come out of darkness. Say it, say it, say it. I come out of darkness. I come out of idolatry. I come out of evil. I come out of fighting. I come out of darkness. I come to Christ. I come to Jesus. He is my Savior. Say it. He is my Savior. Say it aloud. He is my Savior. Lord, help me. I will not go back to my sins anymore. I will not go back to the evil anymore. I receive Jesus. Let him hear you. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. Say it. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. My sins are forgiven. Come to live inside my heart now. Forever live inside my heart. In Jesus' name. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. And keep standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all these men and women, boys and girls, everyone standing up. And they have sincerely turned away from sin. And they turned to the Lord Jesus, their Savior. Lord, save them now in Jesus' name. Forgive them now in Jesus' name. Take all those bad, bad things away from their lives in Jesus' name. Let the peace of God come to them. 
Let your forgiveness and pardon come to them. Let the joy of salvation come to them. And let the victory of salvation abide with them now, even forever in Jesus' name. Give them strength. Give them power. And give them authority. And give them boldness to overcome all the sins of the past. Make them new creatures in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Thank you for their salvation. Thank you for their forgiveness. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord. Somebody there said, praise the Lord. It's a time for your healing. I said, it's time for your healing. The wonder of healing and freedom from sickness. You'll be free now. Identify the problem you have. Locate the problem you have. Any part of your body. Your head. Your stomach. Paralyzed legs. Blind eyes. Deaf ears. Dumb tongue. Whatever. Something swollen in the body. Whatever. When you identify it, you lay one hand there. And then you raise up the other hand. Then we are going to pray. And when you hear amen, that means it's done. It's finished. Tonight, enough is enough. You will not carry the problem back home in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand in the place you have the problem. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because tonight is a night of wonders, night of miracle, night of healing, night of deliverance. And we know that you are touching your people now. You are giving them the wonders in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, according to your promise, you have said, you are the Lord who heals everyone. And therefore, we pray there will be a manifestation right now, everywhere, for everyone, in Jesus' name. From the top of the head to the tip of the toe. And from the left to the right to the center to the back to the front. In all the halls and everywhere. Lord, I pray, miracles taking place everywhere right now, in Jesus' name. That spirit of insanity and that spirit of madness, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any evil, evil spirit walking about in their body, oppressing, tormenting them, afflicting them. You evil spirit, evil power, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any swelling in their body. Whatever kind of swelling, that goiter, you are coming out. Hunchback, you are coming out. Any fantasies, you are coming out. Lord, I pray, touch them right now. Heal them. Remove that sin in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any incurable disease. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. And yet, yeah, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. Any pain in any part of your body, I pray right now, you are healed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those who have any oppression, any attack of evil spirit, evil power, I break that yoke right now. I remove that curse right now. Set them free in Jesus' name. And those who have had long-standing problems, mountains, they have taken to the hospital. They have taken to people that can help, and they couldn't help, and they are here tonight. Oh Lord, do the impossible. Break that yoke tonight. Destroy that work of the devil tonight. Set them free, everyone, in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. Deafness, come out in Jesus' name. Dumbness, come out in Jesus' name. The spirit of deafness, I told you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray they will hear. I pray they will speak. 
Lord, I pray for those who are blind, that bandage of the devil be removed right now in Jesus' name. Glaucoma, vanish away. Cataract, vanish away. Dimness of sight, vanish away. Blindness, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, as they open their eyes, they will see. Lord, they will see. Confirm each and every life in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have arthritis, any pain of arthritis in their body right there, pain, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. One leg shorter than the other, grow out in Jesus' name. That withered hand, be healed in Jesus' name. Stroke, be healed in Jesus' name. Paralysis, be healed in Jesus' name. Any kind of sickness, any kind of infirmity, Lord, I pray you touch everyone now. To my right, touch them. To my left, touch them. In front of me, touch them. In those buildings, touch them. Healing everywhere in Jesus' name. Miracles everywhere in Jesus' name. Deliverance everywhere in Jesus' name. Confirm it now in everyone. We well, thank you because we know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's until you are calling to your faith in Jesus' name. Check up yourself, check up yourself. Ushers, check them up. Counselors, check them up. Members of God, check them up. You see the miracle there. You bring them out here. Don't just clap. Bring them out. Ushers, wherever they are, bring them out. And you, don't move, don't move, don't move. Stay there and check up what God has done for you. You are here to get a miracle. And so, if you have gotten one, shout amen wherever you are. Where are you? We are waiting for you. Check up your body. Check up your stomach. Check up your egg. Check up the problem you brought here. And if the people are still sitting down, help them to rise up. But the deposit of God's power is upon them. Be quick, be quick, because we want to start now. Yes, please, can we have them line up? We want to take some of them now. Praise the Lord. My name is Obas Emmanuel from Boni region. Since November last year, I have been suffering from end stage kidney disease. So I went to UNCH Enugu. That's where I've been taking care of since November. So they say the only sustenance I have for now is um, homodialysis which I need to be doing three times in a week. But uh, due to financial issues, I'm doing it uh, once in a week. So as I came to the crusade this evening, I was having pain and so weak. When the pain comes, it will feel as if I want to toilet. But when I sit down and relax, it will subside. As a man of God prayed now, after the prayers, I have strength. And the pens, I cannot feed them any longer. I believe kidney, God has kidney problem. from this kidney issue this night. <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. The Lord has done it. He came to me in the office before the crusade. And he said he was looking very, very tired and weak. And he wanted the GS to pray one on one. I told him, don't worry. When he throws the bomb, it will touch your kidney. And the bomb has been thrown. It has touched the kidney of this man. You can see this man walking now. He is healed. And what God has done for him, he will do for you tonight. 
Brethren, praise the Lord. My name is Sister Anne Edward. By the grace of God, I'm saved. Bring them out, bring this them out. This boy with me here is my son and he's six years old. He has been suffering for sickle cell anemia since he was born. So this morning, we came here by 3 o'clock yesterday. This morning, I feel that the pain comes up. So I give him in normal routine drugs. So after the drugs, the pain comes down. Then towards this evening, he has been crying for the pain. So after the last prayer of the man of God, I held the leg as the man of God was making the prayer. I said the sickness is going to be healed in Jesus' name. Then after the prayer of the man of God, when I asked the boy, he said he's not feeling the pain anymore. Praise the Lord. Sickle cell has vanished. It will not come again in the name of Jesus Christ. Another one. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Goodness. By the grace of God, I'm saved. I want to thank God how God has healed my stomach pain since in the morning. And last month, I've been having eye problems. And I told my mom, my mom now said I should pray. And the time my mommy went to Abuja, then I, I called her, she now said that I should pray. And I now prayed. And now, as after the prayer of the man of God, the stomach pain and the eye problem is gone. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am very happy this night. Because God has done something for me that man cannot do. I have received my salvation. My name is Emmanuel Patrick. I am very happy. Since the day that I gave my life to Jesus, I felt to me, every time that I'm just praying or I'm studying the word, I'll be having doubt to me that, are you sure you're a Christian? Are you sure you're a child of God? But I prayed and asked God that, if he has chosen me to be his servant, that let him do something good for me. I was, I was in my house with my brother, with my cousin. So he was, he was complaining of pain. God helped me as I prayed. God answered my prayer and healed him. Also, I prayed that let there be no rain today and God answered me. Also, at this moment, I prayed for salvation in my soul and God gave me peace of mind. I thank his name. For no one is like Jesus. Amen. I say my in Jesus name. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. We thank God. This man has also told us, uh, tell, told us something tonight. He said, no rain. Yes. If you just love God, wave your hand and say, God is great. Praise Jesus. By the grace of God, my name is Sister Grace. I'm from Benue State. I'm not saying that in Nigeria, I was in Asa in Nigeria. Central Africa Republic. I have accident about two years ago in Central Africa Republic. By the grace of God, about one month ago, I cannot even bend the leg again. So yesterday, I had that when Daddy is coming, I went to Bible Revival Hour yesterday. Today again, I went to police station, both the DPO, both everybody, police station, I was invited them. And I invited many people also. After I finished, I said, Jesus, I'll finish your own. This leg, I will not go back with this, with this leg. And the hand, I have my breakable hand also from that side there. It is mother that he break the hand. Today, the wheelbarrow here me, and the bone shift. I said, Jesus, as I'm going, both the hand and the leg, everything will be joined together. When I'm coming, I said, Jesus, I'll finish your own work. And this leg, he will finish with this hand. So when I came, I wanted to come to front. The answer they are disturbing me, I begin to speak French to them. I did not speak English. I tried to come. So from there, the leg was joined. And the hand is joined. I can even bend my leg now. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. You didn't say amen. You didn't say amen. Praise the Lord. 
My name is Sister Ugochi Akoro. By the special grace of God, I am saved. Brethren, I want to testify the goodness of God upon my life. Brethren, I was blind. Completely blind. I cannot see. I cannot see anything. I can't even see phone. I can't even see numbers in my phone. I can't see, even see the color of my body. But by the special grace of God, um, the, the medical uh, doctor was telling me that the uh, glaucoma has been in my eyes since three years. Then, including the uh, five years that I have been suffering the glaucoma. But last year, the program that we had with Daddy in the Lord at uh, uh, airport uh, uh, stadium, then after the last prayer, after the last prayer, I received my healing. Since that time up to now, I can see clearly. I can move anywhere without nobody holding my hand. When people see me in the market, they were happy. When people see me in the taxi, they will stop. Is it me? I, they will ask me how it take happen. I say it is God. Since that time, I can see. I can go. Even in the darkness. Even in the crowd. I can go to a crowd. Give us something to some, read. Just give us something. Just tell us the color of that paper. This is yellow now. <laughs> this is God's... Oh, Jesus, you are wonderful. This is... Oh God. This is... Um, the God of wonders. Is it? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! We thank God blindness is gone. Glaucoma is gone. Whatever the bondage, you remember pastor said, whatever bondage the enemy has used is going to be and the bondage is removed. And that bondage will never come to you anymore. It's gone forever by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. That hallelujah is too small for our Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother Felix Kabolo Barry James from Arkon District, Port Harcourt. I want to give God the glory for what he has done. I say may his name be highly exalted in Jesus' name. It happens June 2015. After the Bible study, I went out to where I was doing little business. On my way back, it was difficult for me to walk. And the pain became very severe on one of my hips, the right hip. By the time I got home, the next morning, I was not able to stand up again. That was on Tuesday. I thought the pain would subside, we go down. But the thing kept on increasing. So I was, uh, I called one of our brother working in the hospital. He took me down there, they diagnosed me, and they say it's typhoid and malaria. After the treatment, the pain didn't go. So I, the doctor now referred me to orthopedic hospital. When I got there, the doctor said I should go and do x-ray and other tests. When he saw the results, he asked me, are you married? I said, yes. He said, you need bilateral hip replacement. I said, ah, I was working a few weeks ago, and there is no medication and hip replacement. And that was the first time I was hearing about replacing hip. He said, it will cost me 2.5 million. I went back, I told my pastor, I told brethren. They started praying. And I was not able to walk. I started using walking stick to manage. After some time, I was not able to walk again. We bought crutches. Even with crutches, it was difficult. The brethren started organizing prayers. Brethren started coming to the house. Both children, youth, adults. And pastors. They, I don't, I, one sister told us to go to another hospital. That in that hospital we have doctors from India. When I got there, with the station, they connected me to one specialist. 
So after the, the, the same doctor from India said, I need bilateral hip replacement also, that it cannot be done in this, in this school in, in Nigeria here, that I need to come over. The brainer also took me to Lagos when another uh, specialist came. The same thing. So to cut the story short, when we came to see the state pastor, the state pastor said, that he will not be able to attend to anybody, now. That, the G, that GS is coming, that any problem, GS will handle it. So the brethren took me to the crusade, they carried me. The first one, I was not able to come out from the, the vehicle to the uh, crusade Tell ground. Tell us what happened, brother. Praise the Lord. What God has done for me after the crusade is that I'm not using the crutches, I'm not using the wheelchair because I use wheelchair when I go to all those places. And also, I'm not using any walking aid. The Lord did it perfectly. And anybody that sees me, they ask me, did you go for the operation? I say, no. Many people are calling me, test a miracle. You will not go there anymore. Amen. God has replaced the heap for you. Amen. God bless you. You didn't give a clap offering to Jesus for this wonderful, wonderful miracle you have done on this man. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. God did wonderful things I did not expect. I was coming to this program. My name is Mary Chisa. God made me to see clearly for over two years now. When it is by this time, I don't see far. Even when I was sitting at the back there, I could not see our daddy. But after the prayers, I was seeing him clearly. Hallelujah. Without no anything. So God did it. Thank you. Then, this my head. When the eyes used to trouble me, the head is as if they are grinding something inside my brain. And when I was coming, that it continued. I was feeling pain all over the body. I could not shake my body, but I can jump now. I can shake all jump my again. body. Yes. Jump again. Amen. Amen. The Lord has touched her eyes. The Lord has removed that uh, impediment in her, in her sight. And the Lord has also healed her long protracted you know, uh, headache. We thank God for that. Praise the Lord. People of God, praise the Lord. I'm Staff Sergeant Ezuo Wadike. Since 11 years ago, this incident happened in Ikeja Cantonment before I was posted to Bori Camp, 1060 workshop. A girl opposite my blog gave me track to Oga, we are having program in this church. I'm a member of Winners Chapel. Somehow, I was feeling reluctant. But... I, 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 oh my God. I just take it upon myself. I say today I will wear uniform. I will come to this place. And last two weeks ago, I was using walking stick instead of these crutches. In my office, my CEO is there. I don't know what happened. That walking stick got broken. I now started using these crutches. I was confused. While in the church, I was about leaving the church. A brother, I don't know him. He's a soldier. Come now, man of God will soon pray. You will drop these crutches. I feel reluctant. I say no. I asked my bus driver to wait for me. But I said okay. I move. I said I can't walk straight to where I'm sitting before. He said anywhere I want, let me sit down there. I said okay. So when the man of God was praying, something touched me. He said keep these crutches one side. After praying, a long distance where I'm sitting, I'm surprised. That I can walk from there to this place. For 11 years, I give, Amen. Thanks, to I give thanks to Almighty God. Thank you. My CEO in the workshop, we are here to life. For, for a soldier man, you know, this soldier man, <laughs> for the soldier man to say he must have courage to come here oh, is really a miracle. Please the Lord down. does not know soldier. The Holy Spirit, if you have problem, it touches you, you are gone. Everything is there. Uh, the man for 11 years has not walked without stick. 
But today, look at the man. He has regained his strength as a soldier. The Lord has blessed your soul. Worship him all throughout your life. 